So this is the third video in this series. And in this one, we're gonna look at how to block out his body. We're gonna be able to do his belly, his little, his little um, feet and arms, and we're gonna do it in what's called a T pose or, a, or an A pose, which means his arms are down by his side like this in an angle. And we're going to do a little base that which will, which will become the rock base in the end once we start detailing it. So let's dive right in and do some blocking out. So this particular video, we're going to take a look at the block out of the body and the arms and the legs, and we'll also block out the base. And then that means we've got a really good idea of the scale and the size and where we're going with this as, as, as a piece. And then from there, we'll start working out the individual remaining parts like the lightsaber and the hands and then the detailing. So let's switch over to Nomad and we'll bring this image in as well. OK, we're back in Nomad, so let's bring in that image that we've just saved. So we go up here to background, stick on references. And if you haven't already hit the plus and import it, and if you have, it'll be in the background like mine is there. Now, if we were working over the top of it, we could just scale it like so and work on it. And we could do like we've done in previous videos, we could alpha it out so it's less um, opaque. Um, and, and obviously we can change the position and scale. So if you're doing something like that, I would recommend that you do that. Um, now it's in a pose, so we can't really sculpt over the top of it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it up here. You can see me moving it with the X and Y coordinates, and I'm just gonna keep it up there as a reference while we build. And now one other thing before we start, we've got the grid on, but obviously his head is um, quite close to the grid. And there's two ways you can solve that because we want the grid to be the floor. So there's two ways we can do it. We can select both with the little ticks and then use the gizmo and that will move them together. That moves everything together. So that's one way of doing it. And the other way to do it is to come over here and you come down to, let's move into the grid. So you're in display settings and down to grid and you can move the height of the grid in there as well. So there's two ways that you can that you can mess around with it and, and get the, 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 the floor in the right place. So we want to block him out. So what does that mean? So we're going to use primitives. We're going to use cubes and spheres and all kinds of different basic shapes. And we're just going to put one of everything in the scene. That's what a block out is called. It's some kind, sometimes called doing the primary forms. And it basically means we can work out scale. We can work out, we're not going to do pose because this is going to be in a relaxed pose. We'll do the pose at the end, but we want separate objects for the arms, the body, the legs, and then the base. So very simply, first of all, let's just throw in some shapes. So let's put a cylinder in. This is going to be a rock, so we can change this to a dark gray straight away. Take away all of the reflection, so roughness up to one, metalness down to nothing. And then make sure you force paint it. Scale it up because it's going to be quite large in the scene and scale it down vertically. And that is all we want to do for our base. That is going to be eventually, that's going to be a rock. So we can validate that. So that means now we can sculpt on it and then we can place that where we want. So if we wanted it like this and thinking about the body, how big it is, probably something like that would be about right, which would now mean that that floor grid, we can move that down. So you know, normally I don't really mess around with the floor. I normally move the model more, more than the floor. Look at it with perspective on and off, and you can also snap it to the front. That gives you a really good idea. And this is a good time to talk about camera positions. So that's a front orthographic view. If you come up here to cameras, you can do add view and rename that. So we'll rename that to uppercase front. Oh, sorry, didn't do it. Front. Can't even spell today. That's that one. And then what we'll do is we'll rotate him to the side and we'll snap it. Remember, perspective is off. We'll do another camera view and we'll call this one, rename this one as side. Like so. And you could even do another one. You could do top, for example. So I'll just get it lined up. Snap it completely on the top like so. And you add a view, rename it, and we'll call this one top. 
And this makes Nomad perform very much like other 3D programs because it's going to give you these orthographic views. Let's just call that top. Okay, so you've got these three views now. If you pin that open, that means that when you move around, the, the panel's not going to disappear. And you can just switch between your views very quickly. So that does help you as you're modeling. And that's something that you can do. Um, when you, you could put your artwork in the background. And then once, once you've got these camera views, it would come back to that same position every time. So you could, in fact, lay out a piece of artwork with all the different um, positions in as well. We, we, we just don't need it for what we're doing here. But there's a good start. We've got a base and we've got some camera views now. So let's just work out some really basic shapes for the body. So let's put in a sphere. We'll make it grey because we're going to duplicate it a few times. Force paint it. And let's just work out how big that body would be. So um, let's come around here, validate it because that doesn't matter. You can look at the wireframe if you want, but it, it, you know at this stage it really doesn't matter. So we want that body to be about the size that it is now actually so we'll scale it up a little bit and bring it up to the top like so and that that will give us pretty much what we need as a basis basis for the body you can extend that up with the normal shapes like so and that again look at it from the side or use your camera view for side and then you can put it slightly back and angle it slightly forward like so and that looks fine for the base, you know, the, the, the start of the body. Now we'll do a similar thing for the arms and we'll just block out the arms. So it's very, very quick like this. Um, we, we will rename this as we go, which as you, those of you that know me know I am terrible at this. I say that all the time. So there's body, duplicate it, move it over, shrink it down like so. And then we'll extend it along and rotate it. I'm just using tools that you've seen in the previous video. So again, if you're stuck on any of this, go back over this series. Literally start and go back to the beginning. So we want to use this tool here now, which is called Trim on the left. And then if you've got Trim going, you then need to use Line. And we'll just trim off the end like so. And then back to Gizmo. And then we can just move him around like this. Now, one good tip for when you're doing things like this is you can move the pivot point. So if you come on here and click pivot, you can move that to where the angle of the shoulder is, like so. You can ro rotate it around as well. And, if, and then lock the pivot again. And what that means is that's going to pivot literally from where, you, where you've placed that pivot, which means it's like a limb. And when we get to posing, that that's quite u or can be quite useful. Now, we're going to keep the arms down by his side like that. We will eventually do this, which is symmetry. We'll go world center, left to right, yes. And that'll give us the arms across the, the center. And symmetry should be on now. We can use move, and we'll just basically move our arms, just a very, very small brush, lowish intensity if it's too aggressive. And we'll just put a tiny bit of a bend in this arm. So we're going to bend it back a bit like that. No detail at all. We're just doing the intent of what his his or we're we're trying to make or or construct the basic shapes that will become those body parts. So don't be thinking that you need any detailing and don't get lost in any other detailing at this stage. And that is enough for that. So tap back on the body. If you can't see it very well, remember you can always come up here, put outline on, That's that, and that'll always help you. So we want to duplicate that again. Um, one thing I didn't do, as I told you, I'm not very good at it, I didn't name these. So let's go back and just name the arms. back to the body, you can duplicate it, back to gizmo, bring it down. This is now one of the feet. So if it's going to be one of the feet, let's snap it to the front so we can come to our, our view. So we want front and we know it's not perspective anymore. We can go back to trim, but instead of using the line, we use rectangle and just trim it off at the bottom like so. Move it down, scale it across. Like so I'm looking for a, or a shoe shape. Look, look here, the, this little shoe shape. And then move it down here. Move it into place. 
and then again you can go to side if you want you can see it's completely wrong at the side but that's fine this is how it works you know you, you you're you've got to get it right in all of the different views so back to perspective now i'll angle the feet out a little bit like this so splay the feet out that's always good with cartoony sort of characters and that's probably enough for the foot so i won't rename it just yet because i'll go symmetry i'll go world center left to right yes and then we've got his his feet in place so again that's another one done that's the feet done and let's put some um, legs in next so there's a couple of ways we could do that we could just use primitive shapes like a cylinder or we could use the tube tool which we've we've, we've seen with the horn so let's use the tube tool so we'll come down here until we find the tube tool all the way to the bottom down here and then tube if you can't see it and you have to do what i did there you can just do that and then they come up in a little group like that so we want our tube tool and we want to go to use path and then what I will do is, oops, I don't want to do it down there. We'll choose path and we'll just do a few paths for what's going to be his leg, like so. Hit the green button and you've got a tube like this. You can mess with the radius with with with, with um, this. So if you hit radius like that, that means you can affect it each individual span. So hit it again. And you, that, sorry, that's when you can do it on the individual span. So we want this to be the ankle, this to be the knee, and then this to be the thigh. So this will be the the, the, the the widest, thickest. And look at it, validate it, and look at it. And that's our little leg. So let's go gizmo, rotate it to the front, scale it down, move it into place, like so. Move it down here. So I'm just literally using those little arrows just to think about how I'm going to place it. Again, this isn't sculpting at this stage. This is really just getting all of our parts in in alignment, really, for, for our block out. Um, and then once he's right, once you've got him in roughly sort of the right position, you notice there the foot isn't actually connecting with the ground. That means I didn't do a very good job. I didn't see that that was in the, the you know the, the the wrong place there. So just make sure it's connecting with the ground. Trim it off again if you need. Back to that leg now, and that looks fine. So let's colour that grey as well. Force paint it, and let's let's merge these together because we don't we don't need to have them separate. So if you remember, we we hadn't renamed the body, um, the foot from the body. So select two. And we'll use voxel merge, not a particularly high resolution, so about 150 on my machine. Voxel merge, and look at the wireframe. It's very high compared to the rest of the model, but that's absolutely fine. Okay, so now they're merged to, to one, like you can see, like so. It just says tube, so we can rename that to leg. And we won't name it left or right because we're about to do this which you know how to do now which is world center left to right yes and that gives us those legs like so so now we've got a body looks a little bit odd because it, it, it's looking as though he is tilting forward a bit so we've got to solve that in a moment and we've got the legs and we've got the arms so everything's in the right place now so everything now is about the um positioning the like the, the making sure that the length of the arms is right and and the, the body is the right sort of shape so what we'll do is we'll come up to move we'll, and we'll start moving this around which is the, which is the, the the body so i'm just going to bring it down at the front because if you notice on the image he's got a little um i'll zoom in here and show you he's got a little um a fat belly coming over um uh, almost like the, the front of an apron um, or he's got like a belt around his schmock. I don't quite know how to describe it, but you you, you know th that that would definitely um, need to be represented in this base. So I'm going to just pull down his little belly like this, and that automatically gives us the shape of his of his little sh sh schmock or sh schmock. I don't I don't know that word schmock. <laughs> um, and there you go. Now looking from underneath, if you need to hit solo. And then you can go underneath because this is where we're going to go up under where his legs go underneath it. Like so. Again, we're not doing any sculpting. This is just using the move tool. Get this little, you know, his, his, his chunky little belly needs to be a little ball from all angles. 
So bring it into his chest, like so. This is where having the, the reference is good. So by all means, get the reference from our resource hub. Um, I'll put all kinds of different references in there for you to use. And hopefully by the time you're watching this video, I would have put you a um, an image that would be used for the, the in all of the orthographics. So a top, a side, a back. And if that's in there, then you should be in a, a position to do this over the top of that image. So by all means, go and take a look in the description and see if that artwork's there for you. So turn solo off. And there you can see now we're really getting to the, the kind of shape that we want. But there's a few things wrong. So these arms are too high. So let's bring those down like so. Don't forget it's on. it's got symmetry turned on, so it will, res it will respect the symmetry as we're doing it. The body is, is off center. Look, it's really not looking good from the side. So let's go to the side and we'll bring that body forward and up a little bit. We'll bring those feet forward now. So let's have a look what they look like. So we need to make sure symmetry is on or we will have a problem. Um, you know, don't 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 not do do symmetry like that or it or will cause you a problem. So I'm gonna use instead of doing it that way, I'm just gonna use the move tool because I don't want to, to move it too much. Symmetry is on. And I want that arc in the thigh. I definitely want that thigh still bending for even though you're not going to see the thigh. It's good to get that in there at this very early stage. So he wants a knee. Make sure his knee is there. It's good to have the outline on here because this is really helping me see um, what what's going on. So I might clip the back of the shoe off when I'm ready. But that's now probably given me enough. You can see there that looks much, much better just with that little bit of a move. So let's do a bit more on his arms. Like so. So his arms should be thin at the top going into this, into the, the, the end of his sleeves where the, the hands are going to go. And we are going to leave um, all of the the... the these are separates. We're not going to weld them together till right at, at the end of this of this project. There you go. So I think that now is almost at the point where we can say that the block out is 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 good. So let's have a look what it looks like from all angles, and then put perspective back on, and then you can really see what he looks like. Let's turn off outline. And there you go. So um, still not happy with the arms, um, and you can you can tweak this as much as you want at this stage. You know, d this is another one of those times when I would say to you, um, take your time with this, because if you get it wrong at this stage, it's going to reflect all the way down in your in your um, work. You know, it will be it gets harder to change it the, the further down into the process you get. So take your time. Make sure you're happy with it at this stage, at the block out stage. The more you can do in the block out stage, the, the, you know, the less chance you've got of, of problems later down the line. And there we go. I think that is more than enough for our block out. So we'll leave it at that stage now. And then the next stage will be to do the similar sort of thing, another block out with those hands and the lightsaber. I really hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are please give us a thumbs up it does help us to get in front of other people who like this kind of content and if you like it enough to give it a thumbs up then please subscribe hit the notification bell and we can let you know when we release new content which is every week at the moment